Come on, can you give some praise in the place? Can you lift up your hands, lift up your voice right now? Come on, let's give him the highest praise. Come on, let's, let's put praise on our mouth. The Bible says that he inhabits the praise of his people. And as soon as you start to praise, I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what the circumstance is. As soon as you put praise on your lips, the Spirit of God comes in. How many know what the Spirit of God brings? Come on, somebody help me out. What does he bring? He brings freedom. That's right. Come on, let's praise him right now. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what situation has you in the face. is staring you out right now. But right now, let's bring the Spirit of God in. The freedom of God. Come on, let's praise Him. Hallelujah. Come on, lift a new song on your lips. Come on, start to thank Him. Start to thank Him. Go down the list. God, I thank You for health. God, I thank You for my family. I thank You for a job. God, I thank You for a church family. God, we thank You for Your provision. God, we thank You for Your favor. God, we thank You that we stand underneath the new covenant. That your blood was shed. And we stand in freedom today that no addiction, no habit, no sin can bring us down. God, we stand in freedom. We say thank you. We say thank you. Come on, lift the highest page. Can you just say hallelujah? Come on, tell your spirit. Say hallelujah. Come on, be like David when he was in the middle of the trial. And he said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Can you do that with me today? Come on, tell your spirit. Say, bless the Lord. Right now, we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come in like David. Woo! David came in, and he said, he saw the giant, and the giant was making everybody else coward in fear. And he came in. And you know where he had been? He had been magnifying the Lord. Come on. He came into the same exact situation that everybody else was was facing. Everybody was seeing the same thing. Everybody was seeing the same pandemic. Everybody was seeing the same restrictions. Everybody was seeing the same economic situation. Everybody was. But he came in. He had been magnifying the Lord. Come on, somebody. That's the difference maker. Who are you magnifying? And today, we have the choice. You have the choice. I don't care what the week has. It's been, it's been a crazy week for a lot of you. I know. I know. I see all of you. I love you so much. I've been praying with you and partnering with you this week. I know some things have fallen apart. Rug's been pulled out. Guess what? God is still on the throne. Come on, somebody. God is still on the throne. Woo! You can hear my voice today. I got allergies that's kicking me in the face. But today, we stand victorious in Jesus. David, he came in, he said, I'm sorry, can you bring it down just a little bit? I can't yell too much today. I'm trying. David came in, he saw the same situation. He'd been magnifying the Lord. He said, who is this uncircumcised fellow? He said, who is this person that's standing in the way of God's people rising with the victorious spirit and today that that's how I came in I came in saying who is this Philistine who is this uncircumcised fellow that's staring you in the face I serve a God who sits on the throne my God is able my God is mighty and he is for us therefore no weapon formed against you no weapon formed against me no weapon formed against my kids no weapon formed against my marriage Woo! gotta get this in your spirit come on no weapon formed against your job no weapon formed against your dream no weapon formed against your career no weapon formed against your calling what god placed on you the the gift that god gave you Come on, nothing, nothing that is formed can prevail because you are with the Spirit of God in you. Come on, can you put some praise on your lips right now? Come on, let's magnify the Lord. Let's magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. 
praise you, God, that we stand in victory today. All of you at home right now, come on, declare that over your home. Declare that over your family. Declare that over your life, over your heart, over your mind right now. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for the victory. We thank you, Lord, that we stand in freedom. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right, one more time. Let's give him a shout of praise. Come on. Let's give him a shout of praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Are you ready to get into God's Word today? You may be seated. Thanks for worshiping. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you what, I came ready to stand in victory today. I came ready to stand in the Spirit of God. And I know that no matter what we face, see, the trials might be different every week. It might be different every day. We don't know. We don't know what we're going to face. Life happens. Life always happens. That's what you're promised. But the thing we are promised, see, when Jesus was with the disciples in the boat, the storm came. Some of us, we believe this weird theology that when we're in Jesus, no storms come. Can I tell you, the disciples were with Jesus. Jesus was in the boat. And yet the biggest storm they had seen as fishermen, those who were seasoned on the water, they knew this storm was crazy. It was wild. But the difference maker is who is in the boat with you. And I love Jesus. And this is, this is what I want to put in your spirit today, even before we dive into the word. Jesus always, no matter the storm, came out of a place of rest. He was sleeping during the storm. That's what I want to release over this room right now. In the middle of this season, we come out of a place of peace. We get up from our nap, wipe the sleep out of our eyes. Oh, what's going on? A storm's happening. Out of the place of rest, I command peace to come into the place. See, that's the difference maker is what's in you. It's what's in you. The Spirit of God is in you. And therefore, you don't release chaos. You don't have to come in and conjure all this stuff up. No, you release peace. We release peace. And we do that this morning. I know a lot of you are facing some storms right now. And I just release that right now. In fact, you can do it yourself. Say, God, I just receive your peace right now. I just thank you for your peace. It sounds so weird, right? But that's the truth of the word of God. That's what you stand upon. It's the word. The word declares we have the peace of God because he is the prince of peace. We have the joy of Christ. Hallelujah. It's a difference maker. Woo! All right, you ready to dive in today? How many are ready to hear God's word? Come on, I believe that this word today is going to encourage you. I believe it's going to fill your spirit and get you ready for this week. Thank you, God. We love you, Jesus. Oh, God is so good, isn't he? Come on, how many believe God is good? How many have experienced his goodness this week? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're in this series, Can You Hear Me Now? And we've really been diving in to get close to Jesus. We've been getting close in proximity to his voice. To listen to him, to get in to what he is speaking to his church. We believe wholeheartedly here at Change that God is moving in our city. And it is those that are attentive to his voice that are stepping in. How many are ready to step into what God is calling you to do right now? Come on. Come on. God is calling his church He's calling us not to sit on the sidelines. This is a season where a lot of people are sitting on the sidelines. They're waiting for it to blow over. Can I tell you that Jesus never waited for anything to blow over? He came headstrong into it, and he came out of a place of rest and peace. He was the game changer. Come on, somebody help me and say, I am the game changer. That's right. You're the game changer. 
It's because of you there's going to be peace in your workplace. It's because of you there's going to be peace at your school. It's because of you that Zoom room's going to change and turn around. It's because of you. It's the Spirit of God in you. And this is a season we are not backing away. We're not waiting for the pandemic to be over. We are stepping in by faith, stepping in with the Spirit of God on us, and transforming a city. And so this series is all about that. Can you hear me now? We're saying, yes, God, we're stepping into proximity so we can be in network with him. How many have ever been without cell phone service? And you know, you lose connection, right? Everything doesn't work when you're not in the network. You got to get in proximity. But when you're in proximity of the tower, you can connect to the power source. You can connect to the source of stream. Today, we're streaming online. We have to be connected to the internet. If we're not connected, the stream's going to stay right on that computer. But as soon as we're connected, the, the possibilities are endless with what we can plug into, what we can stream to. That's what God wants to do in us in this season, is plug us in. Plug us in. You ready to get plugged in? Let's go, let's go. All right, I want to read today 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 through 14. This is Paul talking to Timothy. And we find Paul, a lot of these, these letters were written from prison. So we find Paul in a, in a season. We find Paul in a place where he had preached the gospel He'd been working for the Lord. He'd been empowering the saints in the churches. Everywhere Paul went, he stroke up revival. And so we find him in the prison. And I want to encourage uh, some of you who might feel like you're in the prison. I want to encourage you today. Paul, he had an obstacle. He had a barrier. But he turned it into an opportunity to spread the power of God even in the midst of the prison. Can I tell you that God wants to use your season no matter where you find yourself? And it, it all comes down to perspective. Everybody say, my perspective is power. Come on, say it again. Say, my perspective is power. Your perspective has the power to defeat you or to bring you into your destiny. And you might say, oh, pastor, I'm in a prison right now. Pray that I get out. You know what I want to pray? I don't want to pray that you get out. I want to pray that your perspective changes. Because that prison might be the greatest opportunity for God's power to be shown in your life. Now, I'm not preaching captivity. I'm not preaching that we should just stay in the prison. But I'm saying we, we see Paul in probably one of the darkest places of his physical life. He was beaten. He was abused. And he was put in prison in shackles. But we see, it, last week we talked about how they were on the way to Asia. But the Holy Spirit kept directing their path. Can I tell you that the Spirit of God will direct you? That is a promise we have. That's the promise that we are children of God and He's always looking out for our path. The Bible says that the righteous man, his steps are ordered. They're ordered. They're commanded by the Lord. And so when you are in the Spirit, when you are tuned in, when your perspective is on Him, when you seek first the kingdom of God, he directs your steps. He guides you everywhere so you can be assured. You can be uh, faith-filled that your season is for your good. And your season, if you can just change your perspective. I know this is hard. But some of us, we find ourselves in a difficult season. And we so, we, so we, we throw these questions of, God, where are you? God, why this? God, let me just get out of this season. Let's change our prayers and say, Holy Spirit, what are you doing here? Because I'm here for a reason. I'm here for a reason. And if I can see my prison in a different light, I can turn that prison into a platform. I can turn that prison into an opportunity to share God's love, to share God's power, and to use it to change every place I find myself. So we, we find Paul in the middle of a prison. And he is, he's writing a letter to Timothy. Now, Timothy was a man of God, and he was a young minister. He'd come up, and we see all throughout this, this letter, Paul's reminding him, hey, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. Set an example. So we know that Timothy is a young minister. He's in the ministry. He's 
he, the elders had laid their hands on him and given him a gift. Now, in this portion of Scripture, we see Paul encouraging Timothy to fan into flame. So I want to read it. Let's read it together in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. We'll start, it says, for this reason, so he had just gone out by telling Timothy, hey, that spirit of God that's in you, right? He says, I saw it in your grandma, saw it in your mom, now I see it in you. He's reminded Timothy of what's inside of him. And today, I believe that that's what God wants to do with you. He wants to remind you what's in you. He wants to remind you what's in you. In verse 6, he says, for this reason, so because you have that spirit in you, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. Everybody say, in you. In fact, let's change that. Say, in me. In me. The fan into flame, the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. So do not be ashamed to testify about the Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel. By the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace is given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Verse 10. He says, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald, an apostle, and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed. Everybody say, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and am convinced. Everybody say, convinced. Yo, this is a word you got to underline convinced this is where this is where the flaky christians go from flake to faith it's being convinced paul said i've gone from i used to be a young child he said i used to be a young child they would clothe me but now i am grown He was talking about the suffering that he was going to take for Jesus Christ. But he came into a place where he said, I am convinced nothing can shake my faith. I'm stepping into a place where I will die for this cause. That's the difference between being a part of the faith and standing in the faith. Being a part of a church, I attend change, right? I attend a church or being the church. Everywhere you go, you affect because you are the church. You're convinced of the word of God. That it goes from reading to living. From digesting to regurgitating. <laughs> from, from just taking it in to giving it out. From just experiencing the power to releasing the power. From knowing about the joy, hearing about the peace, hearing that pastor talk again and again. He's always talking about joy and peace and strength. To experiencing it. To coming into a convincing life where we are convinced. Write that down, man. You got you to underline that. Because that is the difference. That will be the difference in your life. I promise you. When you step into being convinced of the word of God. To be in faith filled to know that it is truth. Where were we? Verse 12. He says, because I know when I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. Now Paul's talking about the day that Jesus comes back. That's the day we're all living for, right? I hope you are. There will be a day. Can I tell you? That Jesus is coming back for his bride. Don't let him catch you sleeping. Paul said, that's the day I've entrusted. I've entrusted him with a deposit. I've given him all of my life as a deposit for that day. Everything I do is for that day. Every breath I take is for that day. Every time I step into my job, it's for that day. Every time I love my family, love my friends, love those on the street, love those at the, the grocery store, 
pay for somebody's groceries, love on somebody and pray for them. Every time I step out of faith, it's a deposit for that day. Come on, somebody got to get that in your spirit because maybe you're living for it today. You're living for you. You're living for whatever, the success of this world. Can I tell you, Paul said, I'm convinced. I'm convinced of this thing. This is truth to me. This is my life. I'm stepping into this as reality. And therefore, I, I trust God with deposit. I give him everything for that day. That's good stuff. Verse 13, what you heard from me, keep. Everybody say, keep. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching. I want to ask a question today. What have you kept as sound doctrine? What have you kept as sound teaching? What do you wake up every day with the, the grounding, the foundation of your life? The foundation of your interests, the foundation of your pursuits, your drive, what is the thing that you found yourself in? Because whatever that is, I can tell you, well, that, that is what you will gain from. That is what you will grab from in your power and what you try to release in joy and what you try to release in peace is whatever your sound teaching, that which you place your life upon. And Paul said, hey, Timothy, I've taught you the word of God. I've taught you that the spirit of God is in you. I've taught you that you carry the power. But he said, keep it as a pattern of sound teaching. Now, again, this goes back to the renewing of our minds. It's a renewing, it's a repeating. It's a getting in our life as a re revelation because until it becomes a revelation, it's just words on a page. It's just a good quote. It's just a good line that might get you encouraged for the moment. But can I tell you, until it becomes a revelation, becomes a part of your life, you can't be convinced of it, you can't live in it, and you absolutely can't step into it as a promise. And so you have to be convinced. He said, keep as a pattern. Keep as a pattern of your life. Let this be a part of your everyday life. Let this be a part. Guard it. And then he, the, the last part, this is huge. He says, um, so he says, keep it as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. That's a, that's a big scripture right there. You just repeat that, get revelation out of that all day long. Verse 14, he says, guard. Come on, somebody say guard guard. This is, this is something that you got to get in your spirit today because this is the word of God for you. He says, guard. Guard the good deposit. Guard what God placed in you. Guard that spirit that's in you. Guard that calling that's on you. Guard that season you're in. Guard that favor on your life. Guard it. Guard it. Guard that truth you got out of your devotions. Guard that revelation that God gave you when you were 12. Guard that calling that you remember when he changed your name, just like when he did with Peter. He said, Simon Pebble, no, now you're Peter A. Rock. He said, guard that. Guard it with the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, you ready to dive in? Let's go. Every choice you make, every choice you make is doing something to the gift of God in your life, the gift of God on your life, the calling of God on you, everything you do. We don't like to think like this. We like to think like life is just neutral and we go through life and sometimes, you know, there's these good moments or good encounters, but then, you know, it's something that is with the season. And so we go through hard seasons and we feel like, well, God's just not, you know, he's not working. I mean, maybe this is a season of just rest for me. Maybe I'm just supposed to rest. Hey, n nowhere in the Bible did Jesus ever tell his disciples, push pause. Let's push pause right now. I just want you to take a season for you. Okay? That is something that the Western culture church has, has brought into existence, but that was never Jesus' language. It was never Jesus' command. He never commanded his disciples, hey, push pause. Push pause. This season is all about you. Now, is there seasons where God pours more into you? Absolutely. Why? Because we're plugged in. We're planted to the streams of life. How many are planted right now? Man, I'm telling you, if I weren't planted, this season would wipe us out. If my wife weren't planted, this season would take us out. But it's not. It's not. And we don't have to take a season where it's just all about us. We just, we just need to plug in and it's just all about me. No. I flow in the gift of God, and I'm planted, so he's always filling me up. 
Oh, y'all don't hear me today, do you? This is what I want for you. You got to be planted, change. You got to be planted. Please don't live off my words. Please don't live off that YouTube sermon. Please don't, don't live off those Instagram shorts. Please, 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 please get yourself planted. Because when you're planted, every season is for your good. Every season you're filled up. Every season. So here's what I want to talk about today. Because everything you do is doing something to the fire of God. Paul said to Timothy, fan into flame. Now, he was not talking about a new calling. He was not talking about a new fire. He was not talking about a new venture or a new mission. He was reminding Timothy of what was in him. Today, I want to remind you what God placed in you. You don't need a new revelation. You don't need a new aha moment. You don't need this, this light bulb, lightning, straight, striking out of the heavens. You don't need the hand on the wall. You don't need more confirmation. I'm here to tell you, Timothy. I'm here to tell you, child of God. God has already marked you. He's already called you. And today, God's word to you is fan it into flame. Don't let it go out. Guard it. Guard it. Your job as a child of God is to guard that fire, to guard it every day, to rekindle it every day, to get up in the morning, rekindle the fire. All right, God, here I am again as a child of God. I declare this truth over me. I know all day long yesterday, maybe there was stuff that happened at my job or maybe even those closest to me, they spoke whatever, whatever, whatever. Today, I renew my mind again. I get up. You do that? In the morning, you got to refresh again. It's like getting a shower every day. Jesus washed me, and Jesus put the truth on me. So I stand in truth. Because all day long, you're going to be getting lies. But, oh, there's so many lies going on right now. So many lies. And, and the sad part is, there are a lot of lies coming out of the Christian language. There are a lot of de-truths that are debunking the word of God. They're debunking it. And just because of past experience, just because somebody hasn't plugged into that power does not mean that it's not true. Can I empower you today? We are convinced. I stand on the word of God. Nothing can shake this faith. Paul said, I am convinced. I trust God with a deposit of what I'm doing right now. There is no second guessing. There is no doubting. As soon as you let doubt in, as soon as you start to question and say, well, I don't know, and what about, you start to, you start to engage in a conversation with the father of lies. It's dangerous. Church, can I just get, can I get a little intense with this just to let you know the seriousness of your doubt? Paul said it, guard. You better guard. You better fan into flame the truth of God. Why? Because there's an enemy who's like a lion who's prowling around. Saying, all right, who can I devour today? Who's going to give in to a lie today? Who's going who's gonna to fall for something that's not true today? Who is it? He's looking for you. He's looking for you to slip up, to just give a little bit of inkling to the lie. Say, oh. I don't know. Yesterday was hard. I don't know. This season has been heavy. I don't know. I don't see the hand of God. No, no more. Paul said, I am convinced. I want to guard it. So you have to know that everything you do, everything you do affects the call of God in your life. Everything you do affects the fire in your heart. You have the choice with every decision you make to either put water on it, or to put gasolina on it. How many pyros do I have in the room? Anybody online? You a pyro? Go ahead and put flame emojis in the comments right now. Let me know. You are a pyrotechnician. I love fire. I don't know what it is about it, but as a kid, all growing up, man, it was the campfire. I was grabbing the sticks, you know what I mean, to, to get a stick on fire and to like wave it like a caveman, you know? I was just that kid who was like, I want to burn stuff and blow stuff up. And it's just so much fun. But fire, 
has the ability to either grow or go out. I don't know if you know this. There's not, not very much science to this, but it's just fire either grows or it is contained and goes out. But in order to fuel the fire, you need an igniter. Everybody say an ignition. You need ignition. You have to fan into flame. A fire does not stay put forever. Now, when we camped, my Uncle Paul and my Uncle Mike were outdoor wilderness men, okay? They were awesome. They taught us everything we needed to know. They, they got me my first BB gun before, you know, it was a, it was a, a thing that, was legal. You know, they, they just, there were those kind of uncles like, you need this. You know, I'm like 10 years old. I'm like, whoa, this is so legit. And we, we I remember our first time went hunting with them. We went camping outside. You know, it was just, it was an amazing experience. But we would, the first thing you do at a campsite when you show up is what? Does anybody know? Let me teach you something today. Build the fire. Why? Because that fire is going to be life. Fire represents life at a campsite. It's warmth, it's food, it's clean water, everything. That fire produces life. So the first thing you do is you build that fire. You build that fire. Then you can work on your campsite. Then you can work on hanging stuff up so the bears don't get your food and all that, all that good stuff. But the first thing you do is build that fire. Fire um, detracts all of the enemies, the bears, the coyotes, all the stuff that could get in and mess your campsite up, the fire is the thing that puts them out. It scares them away. So fire is life. Everybody say fire is life. Now in a Christian walk, the same is true. And that's why here at Change, we don't just believe in, in you coming into Jesus and, and accepting him as Lord and Savior. That's just the first start. The second part is he promised us what? The fire, Holy Spirit and fire. When you get the fire in you, it's the, ch it's the game changer. It's the game changer. If you don't have the fire, I promise you, my friend, you will struggle in this Christian walk for the rest of your life. You will be the one that's dragging. You'll tell everybody, oh, struggle's real. Oh, I'm just praising him, and, and, and I just hope that he's coming back soon. I mean, you will be the struggling Christian. You will be delivering that to everybody you see. But as soon as you get the fire of God, that is the game changer. Why? Fire represents life. It is life. And that's why Paul made it such a point to Timothy. He said, you have this gift on you. You have the spirit of God in you. You have so much power and effectiveness, but you got to guard it. And I'm telling you this today. You have to guard that fire. You have to fan into flame to keep it lit, to bring more gasolina, more gas, put it on the fire to keep it going. Why? Because every day that fire, whoa, hey, how you doing? That water wants to come out, see? The water wants to spill and get on my fire. You can't have that happen. You got to guard it. You understand? You see what happens? It wants to take you out. But you either, the question is, and we'll, we'll give Shakespeare a little shout out. I think this is Shakespeare. To increase or to decrease that is the question. To increase or to decrease, that is the question. That's what I want you to ask yourself this week, today even. Everything you do, am I going to increase or decrease the fire of God? Will I put water on it? Now water, this is, you know, everything of the world. I mean, this is the mindset of the world. This is the inheritance of the world. If you're living for the world, this, this is what you'll put on your fire because this is what you're accepting. Or will you increase and say, all right, I'm going to plug into who God is. I'm going to read his word and let it become revelation to me. I'm going to step out and ignite the fire. I'm going to do stuff that ignites the fire. There are things that we Christians can easily do to step into what God has for us. You know, some of us, we think we, we, we totally take it out of context of, of what God called us to. It's like this big commandment of like, go and preach the gospel to every nation. We blow it up. We're like, oh, this is so huge. In fact, that's why we're taking the whole month of May. And we're going to break down uh, leading someone to the Lord, sharing the gospel. We're going we're, we're gonna to activate this church. How many are ready to activate the, the greatest calling in your life? I mean, this is why you were made. And so we're, we're going to activate that in May. But some of us, we blow it up way out of proportion. 
like it's this crazy thing when really it is just lighting the fire in you and stepping out in faith. How many know that, that uh, faith without action is dead, but faith with action is alive and well? You want to add, add some gasoline to your fire? Step out in faith. Do something out of the ordinary. Pray. Let, let God show you what he wants you to do. Not to pray more about, but to do. Some of us are praying way too much, <laughs> you know? Some of us are praying over, over abundance about what God wants us to do instead of just stepping out knowing confidently, being convinced, God has called me. God has already put everything in me. All I got to do is step out. Don't overcomplicate it. Tell your neighbor, say, don't overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate it. Step out. You never know unless you move. Come on. Somebody's got to move. I feel that so much in this room today. Some of you in this room, you've been waiting. God's telling you to move, to go, to take that step. It's time to move. Enough praying about it. Enough, enough. Get out of your closet. It's time to come. It's time to come and step in. God wants you to move. I want you to move today. Uh, I think about this with Zion. Zion is my oldest. He's my son. He is an athlete to the core. And this kid is always thinking sports, right? Yeah, you are. Always sports, always thinking facts and how the game works. And he, you can see him. He studies the game. I mean, he, when he's watching a game, it's not just like, oh, wow, this is a fun game. He's like, okay, what'd that guy do? Okay, he did this. Oh, why did he do that? Oh, my word, i got to figure that out because we're going to make it better next time. You know, and he's like, Dad, did you see that? This guy did this, and this is why. Because in 1950-whatever, that guy, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm just watching a game here, but you are just, you're deep in it. Well, we, we had him in sports. We had him in flag football, which got shut down because of COVID. And so uh, we are looking around for something to get him involved in. Finally, an opportunity came up uh, for baseball. Now, if you ask Zion what are his favorite sports, He's going to say football and basketball. Baseball is not on the totem pole, right? It's not, it's not on the list. But we said, you want to try it? He said, yeah, totally, totally. So Zion jumps into baseball, gets on the fearless manatees. Come on, somebody. Y'all know manatees are fierce. We told him, you're going to make them fierce, right? Because you're the fiercest manatee I know. <laughs> but he jumps into the manatees baseball. Now, Maybe for the average kid, they'd kind of go through the motions, just get into baseball, but until they can get to something else. Not Zion. Not Zion. Oh, he is getting every book he can on the facts of baseball. He's watching baseball now with pops. He's, he's getting into the, the, the reason why and the strategy and all the stuff. Now, we went to a Phillies game. He's like all locked in. He is practicing nonstop. Now it went from him throwing a football around the house to now he's throwing a baseball around the house. Like, this kid is all in. Why? He's accepted his season of where he's at, and he's growing in his season. Some of you haven't accepted yet where God has placed you. And you're thinking it's the next thing. You're th I'm just going to wait until something comes around. I'm just waiting until this specific thing that God called me to is coming. Can I tell you that God has placed you where you are right now? It's time for you to fan into flame that gift that God placed in you for this season. It's time to move. It's time to move. God has ordained your steps. Now, am I telling you to be foolish and just to, to move without praying or thinking about it? Absolutely not. God gives us wisdom as his children. He leads and guides our steps. In fact, David talked about it all the time. He said, your word is a light unto my path. You are, you are ordaining my steps. In fact, your word causes my foot to not stumble. That's the wisdom God places on us. When you are flowing in the spirit, when he is with you, you can be assured he is guarding you. He is, he's, he's guarding your steps so that you are walking in wisdom. So I'm not talking about just flippantly just making decisions, but I am saying this, that what God has placed in you, it's time to be used. That athletic spirit that Zion has, it, he just transformed it and said, how can I use this for this season? I got to change it a little bit. Now it's not throwing a ball and trying to tackle somebody. Now i got to change it to hitting a ball into the home run zone. 
Now I got to use my speed, not for outrunning someone who's coming after my flag. Now I got to use it to get the first base, the second base, the third base, and a home. Come on, somebody. You got to redirect that fire. God has placed you in a season, though you don't understand it, doesn't, ma- doesn't matter. Paul said, guard it. Fan into flame, that gift. Because you are where you are for a reason. God is transforming the world around you, and he wants to use you. He says, can you hear me now? Are you ready? Come on, somebody. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Where you are right now, God wants to maximize your effectiveness there. Your season might not make sense, or you might be in the greatest season ever, and God's just going to take you up another level. You might, be, you might be so on fire right now. You say, Pastor, I am there. Woo, I got the word of God in me. I'm releasing the kingdom. I'm praying for everybody and their grandma. I'm, I'm, I'm releasing the generosity out of my life. I'm in this great season. I'm telling you, brother, fan into flame. Guess what? Fires always grow when you add more ignition. Come on. They always get bigger. Fire is never contained. Fire is never in a place where it can't grow more. I'm telling you, if you're on fire for God right now, today, God wants to even ignite you more. He wants increase in your life. Come on, God is raising up some revivalists in this room. Online, I don't know where you are in your season, where you find yourself, but God is raising you up to be a revivalist for this time. He's going to use your voice. Hallelujah, I feel that so strong right now. Somebody's watching right now, and you have, you have been convinced that you are not made for it. Today, I'm telling you right now, the Spirit of God wants to use you in a mighty way. He wants to use you in a mighty way. Fan into flame. We got to look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 6. Let's read it together. Romans chapter 12, verse number 6. He says, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Can I just put that in your spirit right now? I don't want you just to get away from evil. I want you to hate it. It's time for the the body of Christ to be disgusted by the evil in the world. We got to get a bad taste in our mouth for the world's culture. We got to get a bad taste in our mouth for the evil in the world. Why? Evil corrupts your fire. It puts it out. It's the water. I'm telling you, if you have sin in your life, if you have anything that's evil in your life, it will put out that fire so quickly. Anything you allow to creep in. And it could be the littlest thing. The the littlest thing. But the littlest amount of evil can start to to put that flame down. Start to decrease. Remember, the question is, increase or decrease? That is the question. There's no neutral ground here. It's either, is that going to take away from the fire of God in my life? Or is that going to increase the fire of God in my life? There's no sitting on the sidelines and just, just letting it be neutral. And he goes on. He says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. And then what's the next part? Cling to what is good. This is what Paul's saying. I'm convinced of the word of God. We have to cling to his word. We have to cling to his presence. We have to cling to the spirit of God. Because it's in that space that we gain foundation. We gain truth to stand upon. Anything tries to rear its head, you go back to what you're clinging to. Now, if you're clinging to this world, then that is what you have to dr- draw from. You know, if you, have you ever been to the ATM and you try to get out some money and it says insufficient funds? And you're like, oh, snap. Who bought too much on the debit card this month, you know? We weren't paying attention to the budget. budget. We had to get that North Third restaurant, holla. Because you know we like that food. I don't know what your downfall is. Ours is food. We love it so much 
But if you've ever been to the ATM and you try to take out, but it's insufficient funds, that's how a lot of us feel when you're plugged into the wrong things. When you're trying to draw from a source that is not sufficient. And that's why he says, you have to cling to what is good. Hate what is evil, because what is evil will give you nothing but distress. It'll give you nothing but, but that, that doubt in your spirit. To walk around with this, this weariness and this dry bones. You're like, God, can these bones live? It's like you've been praying that for years. You've been praying over your dry bones for 10 years. Hey, can I tell you, it only takes one moment for God to breathe into those bones and let them live. What do you tell the prophet? You prophesy. You prophesy. Some of y'all are waiting on God to do something. Can I tell you, get up. Get up. The Spirit of God's in you. Get up. That's why, that's why the alarm clock's so important. Right? That's why snoozing, hate what is evil. I hate that snooze. Oh, it's so tempting, isn't it? Oh, dear Lord. Some days it's real hard. He said, cling to what is good. Get up. Get up. Prophesy to those dead bones. I want to jump down to verse number 12. Is it 12? I'm sorry, verse 11. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. He says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Can I tell you, child of God, this is the thing to guard. If you can guard nothing else in your life, if you can control nothing else, control this. Fan into flame that gift. Come into a place of zeal and passion for the presence of God. I promise you, everything else will flow out of that passion for Christ. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm going through, and I, this, is just, this is just something I've learned about myself. If I feel weary and tired from my load of the world, my load in my job, my load in loving my family, can I tell you one thing I always go back to? How is my love for Christ? How is my passion for his throne? How is my passion for his heart? Because if that's off, I promise you, everything else will be hard. Everything else will be a task. But if you are in love with Jesus, if you are serving him, whoo, I love you, Jesus. Ooh, that fire is burning in your heart. Oh, I want this so bad for you. I want this so bad for this church. I want this for your family. Because I know when God lights you up, it's unstoppable. No more do we bring excuses. Oh, I don't have enough. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I don't have that talent. No, enough. I'm telling you, I want this for you so bad because when you get the fire of God, when you get the love of Christ, when you fall in love with Jesus, when you have so much margin, as we talked about last week, so much mar- you can't you can't increase it enough. Every time you get alone, you just put it on your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. God, I love you. Thank you for being in this place. Thank you for being in this room. Guess what? Everything else gets burned up. All the tiredness, all the weariness. You don't come in struggling and dragging. No, it gets burned up because it's fire. That's what it does. Fire burns and purifies. Hallelujah. So he says, keep the zeal. Man, keep the zeal. Keep the passion. Keep the longing and drive for his presence. Elijah, you have to say that because you're a pastor. No, I don't. No, I don't. I could have you totally. uh, I could change my message so much and say, you need to get to church. You need to come and soak from this ministry. I could change it to where you would rely on this word. But I know This word will not be sufficient for every season you face. I know what I take in as steak and give to you as milk will not suffice what you're facing. I know it. That's why this is so crucial that you get it. You have to get it. I can't do it for you. You got to get in your spirit to rise up and say, all right, 
I'm fanning into flame today. I'm pouring gasolina on the fire. The fogo, come on, I'm getting that in my spirit. I'm not going to water it no more. No more sin. No more evil. No more thoughts of doubt. No more uh, going into conversation with the father of lies. And what if, and what if not, and what if. No more. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm convinced of his word. And therefore, I walk in faith. So here's some questions I want you to write down. Grab your journal out. These are some things for you to process. Because how many know Jesus is the... The God of the process. How many know that? Every question his disciples asked, he asked them a question back. Why? Because he was a God of the process. He knew that if, if you didn't get it, if you just heard some good words, it's not going to do anything for you. But if you process through this, get a revelation in your spirit, it's going to light you up. You will become the kingdom. Woo! I feel so much on that. Because you know what? The, the Pharisees said, how will we know when the kingdom of God is, is near? He said, you're asking the wrong question. He said, you won't know. You won't be able to say, oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. He goes, because the kingdom's in you. Let that set in. We're not, we're not out our window saying, where is the kingdom? He said, kingdom come. That's what we're saying. Kingdom come. Where is kingdom come? No, no, no. Go look in the mirror. Michael Jackson, go look in the mirror. It's the man in the mirror. It's the woman in the mirror. Kingdom's inside of you. And that's why it's so important you fan into flame. So here's the three questions I want you to ask yourself. You ready? Number one, what do I know to do? What do I know to do? It's a great question, right? Some of us mystify the calling of God. Some of us mystify the will of God for our lives. And so we, we, we overanalyze it. We over-question it. Here's the question you need to ask yourself. What do you know to do? What do you know now? What do you have in your hand? Uh, God asked Moses that, right? He said, what's in your hand? Oh, a staff. All right, use that. I'm going to use that. What's in your hand? Oh, all right, I have, you know, my job. I'm in Philadelphia. I'm in this neighborhood. I'm a part of this church. All right, that's where you are. What do you know to do? Number two, what can I learn and grow in? The first thing is very simple. What do you know to do? Do it. Step out and do it. The second part, this is the part where we, in prayer and supplication, bring everything before God as a petition right to God and say, God, lead me. What can I grow in? What do you want me to pursue? What do you want me to go after? So there's this, there's this balance, if you would, of the Christian walk of like knowing where you are, walking faithfully, but also looking and saying, how can I grow? What, what, what did God want me to pursue what is the gift of God that Paul said, fan into flame, to grow it, to put more ignition on it? You say, well, I have a gift in teaching. All right, pour that fuel on the fire of teaching. Start to grow it. Start to learn more about it. If you say, you know, I'm a very outgoing person. I love people. Hey, awesome. Fan into flame. Give that gift. Step out. Do it. And then grow in it. How can you expand the boundaries? How can you take it to a depth where God is using you? So what can I learn and grow in? Push the limits. Here's the third thing. How can I increase the hunger? Now, no one can answer this but you. You and Jesus. You got, you got to get on your face because he knows your desires. He knows how you work. If I were to give you this three-step process of like, here's how to get more hunger and passion in life, it wouldn't work because you're individual. I can't speak to your desires. I can't speak to the way you're wired, but God can. How many know that? The Spirit of God can. He can tell you, hey, plug in more like this. Hey, go after my word like this. Hey, use this um, software. Use this app. Use this whatever. Use this. Um, if you listen to the Bible and that gets you going, hey, use it. Use it. How can you increase your hunger? Because that's the main objective, is that you become more hungry for God. You know what revival is? Revival is you becoming obsessed with the Spirit of God. Revival is you becoming obsessed with getting people saved in Jesus' name. That, that, is, that is what revival looks like, is his people coming alive to the purpose on the life. And that's what this church is all about. And some of you, you're even going through the belong process, learning the foundations of your faith, coming into knowing how is God going to use you. Let me encourage you. If you are a kind of stuck in your walk and you're like, hey, I don't know what I know. You know. I don't know where I am. Hey, step into a process. 
Step into this, this, this class of, of stepping into knowing who you are in Christ. Come alive. Be a part. God is calling this church to not only be a church in the city, but be a big part of the transformation that's happening. Are you ready to be a part of that revival that's breaking out in the city? Don't overcomplicate it. Step in. One more scripture. Is this helping you? Good. Praise God. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. He says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, how many got some witnesses in the crowd in heaven? Some of those that have gone before. I got some amazing men of faith up there cheering me on. That's what you got to keep in mind. That's what Paul was talking about, a deposit. I deposit for that day when you come back for me. Everything is for that day. And he says, therefore, since we have this great cloud of witnesses cheering us on, let us throw off, everybody say throw off, everything, everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Let us run. Let us run. Oh, can I put that in your spirit? Come on. It's time to run. It's time to get up, to stand up, child of God. It's time to come underneath the word of God, to know it is truth, and to stand under it. His calling, he is calling you. So let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Here's what you got to ask. Is it a wing? Does it make you sore? Does it ignite the fire? Or is it a weight? Does it weigh your calling down? Does it suck life out of you? Does it suck passion out of you? And every day you make that decision. Is it a wing or is it a weight? He said, throw off everything that entangles, everything that hinders the word of God. Paul says, guard, stand at guard, stand up under the truth. Be convinced that the word of God is truth. You either feed the calling or you feed complacency. It's time to feed the calling. You have a choice every day. Are you going to feed the calling of God in your life? Step out in boldness and grow and increase in that? Or are you going to grow in complacency and just be okay? To just make it through this season. Hey, this church, we are thriving in this season. How many are ready to thrive? Come on. We are thriving. We are thriving. We're, we're looking at ways to increase the way we give, the way we serve. And I want to say thank you to all of you who faithfully give. I mean, some of you, none of you have, have stopped that faithfulness in this season. I want to thank those of you who have made that commitment to say, hey, we are faithfully doing this. You know why? That, that is so crucial because we're seeing life transformation out of that. It's a seed planted. It's a deposit for that day when he comes back. And everything in this world will not matter. The only thing that will matter is what we did with the calling. Is what we did. So I want to end today. I'd love to pray with those of you who want to say yes to Jesus. I want to give an opportunity. Because how many know that, that Jesus' arms are always open? This is the greatest season of grace. There will be a day when Jesus comes back for us. And I want to make sure you're ready. Those of you who are watching online, maybe you're just catching this stream. And you've not yet said yes to Jesus. You've not yet made him Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity to do that today. I want to pray with you and have you come into uh, just a relationship with Jesus. We know that it's not a religion. We're not, I'm not calling you to come into a religion, a set of rules. I'm calling you to fall in love with Jesus. And I promise you that Spirit of God is going to take care of everything else. That fire is going to fill you. The Holy Spirit is going to fill you. And that power of God comes in you. And you are the kingdom everywhere you go. Man, if there's those in this room, you say, I need to say yes to Jesus. I need to make things right. I need to come underneath his authority and make him Lord. If you've not yet done that, would you just raise a hand and say, Pastor, that's me. I want to make that decision today. I'd love to pray with you. Those online, if you'd push that button, someone wants to pray with you today. Be say yes. I want to say yes to Jesus. 
I want to say yes to Jesus. I just want to give a couple minutes. Those who say yes, I want to, I want to come into that relationship with Jesus. Awesome. Awesome. If you would uh, pray with me, those of you who've made this decision, would you pray this prayer from the bottom of your heart? There's nothing special about the prayer. It's just a coming into a relationship with Jesus. It's declared, the Bible says that when we confess him as Lord, we believe in our hearts that, that God raised Jesus from the dead. See, here's the, here's the gospel. The gospel is we were stuck in sin. We, we were bound to death and hell, but Jesus came and died on the cross and rose again. And when he rose again, he gave us the free gift of eternal life. And when we accept him as Lord and Savior, we receive that free gift. How many know it's a free gift? Hallelujah. It's freely given. So you're going to accept that today. Would you pray this with me? Pray this from the bottom of your heart. Say, dear Lord Jesus. Come on, everybody help me out. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. That's that freedom in Christ. Say, Jesus, thank you that you died for me. I believe that you are risen from the dead and that you're coming back again for me. Now pray this prayer. Say, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Hey, maybe some of you in this room, you haven't been filled yet. Pray this prayer. Say, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now declare this, say, I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm forgiven, because I've accepted Jesus into my heart. Hallelujah, and I'm on my way to heaven. Come on, can you make some noise for those that have given their heart to Jesus right now? Thank you, Lord. We praise, we praise God with you. We celebrate with you this new life in Christ. Let me encourage you to get involved, plug in to a life-giving group, a life-giving community. Come into the family of Christ. This is the life of freedom. This is the life of truth. This is the life of reality. Come on, we're gonna do that today. Would you stand to your feet? If you need that fire to be ignited in you, would you lift your hands? I'm gonna pray right now. We're gonna, we're gonna plug into the power of God. He's releasing his kingdom right now in this moment. If you need more of him, you wanna ignite that fire, would you lift both hands up? Come on, just receive it, say, God, Give me more right now. Come on, start to fan into flame that gift. Say, God, remind me of my gift. Remind me of what you spoke over me. Remind me of that talent. Remind me of that characteristic. Remind me of that personality. God, remind me right now, Spirit of God. Just release that over this whole entire room, over those watching online, into their homes. God, take over right now. Holy Spirit, come. Fill us up. Fill us up with your fire. Hallelujah, Jesus.